Good afternoon and welcome to our short session on referencing in the Harvard style. Just as an overview of what to expect from today, we're going to go review the Harvard style of referencing. Um, in particular, we're going to look at the short quote, using a long quote, the concept of paraphrasing or summarizing a text, how to cite a quotation from an author who attributes it to another author, so the concept of secondary referencing. Also, we'll look at how to cite multiple works in your SEO project and how to cite multiple works by the same author and the same year. And lastly, we'll just look at how to create an effective bibliography. Okay, so getting started, the notion of quoting in the Harvard style. As you know, we have both the usage of a short quote and a long quote within the Harvard style of referencing. And within that, a short quote refers to the usage of quotes which are no more than a sentence long. And we've got an example here. So Stark et al. And if you remember back, um, et al. is the Latin term or Latin derivative for and other authors. And it's usually reserved for more than three authors. So Stark and a number of different people, 2002, page 11, describes the purpose of essays as an exercise in written revision and conceptual exploration. So because it's only a short quote, it does not need to stand out from the main body of the essay. It doesn't need to be indented, there doesn't need to be a line of space. It can flow naturally within the text itself. We can always recognize a short quote because of the usage of inverted commas and the citation, the year of publication and the relevant page number, if taken from a journal or from a book. Again, if it's from a website, then it won't necessarily be a page number. Long quote, on the other hand, is slightly different, and it refers to the usage of quotes which are longer than one sentence, and thusly are set apart from the text by one line spacing and indenting. And we have an example here. So, we can see the nature of the long quote. It's quite evident in the text. We can see because of the one line spacing and the indenting, and the use of inverted commas. As well as that, we can see either before but most generally afterwards, the actual in-text reference is put in. The brackets, the surname of the author, the year of publication, and again, the page number. And this is how you should represent a quotation if it's more than one sentence long, whether you take it from a book, website, a journal, or a set of notes. So there's subtle differences between a short quote and a long quote, but effectively they do the same thing, whereas they replicate word for word the information taken from another author or another source. Besides the short quote and the long quote, however, we have access to another system, which is known as the summary of text or the paraphrasing. And we have one example here. So let's take, for instance, the original text. Irish society today is increasingly more diverse and, as with other Western cultures, there have been many changes in how the Irish understand themselves and their society. And this would be an original quote from O'Higgins, Norman, et al., 2009, page 5. We can see underneath this a summary or a paraphrasing it. Irish society has become increasingly more diverse and has noticeably changed in relation to how we as Irish people understand ourselves. Again, what we've done in this case is we've taken the original material and put it into our own words, which demonstrates to our readers that we've read the material, we've understood the material, and we've processed the material in language that we understand. And again, this is very relevant for your essays and your projects because it will give more academic weight to your assignments. It demonstrates that you not only understood your coursework and books, but actually were critical and actually thought about what you're reading, and you can demonstrate that. And always remember, when using a paraphrase, you must restate the author's ideas in your own words. It's not enough just to change one or two words, but you must transform the original text using your own language. So, moving on. Citing a quotation from an author who attributes it to another author. So, this quite commonly happens to a number of students whereby they look through their main textbook, their core textbook, and they find a quotation that they would like to use. And what's happened in this case is the original author of their book has quoted an other academic or another source within their own writing. And students always find that they want to use that quote, and sometimes they won't have access to the actual original material or the other person's work. So. 
we have an example here of how to do it. So Ray Jenkins, in his 2001 report on student learning, theorized that learning can take place effectively both in and out of the classroom. So if we took that quotation from our core course book, this is how we would cite it. So it would be the secondary source being Jenkins, 2001, page 24, cited or quoted in our core course book, Dunn, 2003, page 45. And when writing up your bibliography, you must contain your course book, which will be done 2003, whatever the name of the book and whatever the year and publication date and, and the publisher. It would also be quite advantageous to actually find the original material, Jenkins 2001, and put in the full reference of that, but sometimes we won't always have access to that. So if you find a quotation within a book, that's somebody else's work and you want to use it, that's how you use it. You replicate the quote, you put the original or the secondary author and you put in cited in whatever the actual book you're reading from. So that's how you quote from an author who attributes it to another author. Moving on to citing multiple works. So all academic subjects have more than one expert or perspective. So when writing your essay or report, you may want to demonstrate your knowledge of other perspectives or theories. And this can be done either at the beginning of a sentence or at the end of a sentence. And we have two examples here. So if you want to demonstrate it at the beginning of a sentence, here's an example. O'Neill, 2003, and Kennedy, 1999, suggest that modern HR systems are person-centered. So what we're doing with this sentence is we're demonstrating our breadth of knowledge or our breadth of reading. And we've shown two examples here that back up our suggestion that modern HR systems are person-centered. We can, however, put the citation at the end of the sentence by stating modern HR systems are taught to be person-centered. Brackets, author, year, author, year. And this would be quite a good way of demonstrating to your lecturer or your tutor that you've read not only the core main book but you've done order reading as well which again will add to your, your marks as well so that's quoting from an author who attributed to another work and citing multiple works in your essay okay moving on to the concept of citing multiple works by the same author and the same year again this is another little tricky area so what happens if I have two works by the same author in the same year, for instance, Goldrick 2010 and Goldrick 2010, how will the reader know which citation is which? So how can we differentiate the two sources? Well, traditionally we use the alphabet A to Z, and in this case we can break it down using Goldrick 2000 A and Goldrick 2000 and B. And again, your in-text reference should be replicated in your actual bibliography. So Goldrick M 2000 and A, my PhD thesis and Goldrick M 2000 and B, a conference in Vienna. So we can distinguish the two of them through using alphabetical mannerisms. So that's citing multiple works by the same author in the same year. Again, generally speaking, you're, you're not going to have too many instances above A and B. You may have A, B, and C, but it, traditionally you won't have more than that. And lastly, the creation of a bibliography. Now, as you know, a bibliography should be constructed from A to Z in alphabetical manner. And you shouldn't differentiate between books, websites, or journals. They should all be collected in an alphabetical manner. And again, there's a universal structure to this, uh, whereby the surname, initial of the author, year of publication, name of publication, and the publisher. And you can see the, the creation of a journal is somewhat different. So you have the authors, the year, name of document, the name of the journal, you have an issue number and pages, or the relevant pages. And lastly, uh, a reference from the internet. So again, we can see here that earlier on we looked at Stark et al. And Stark et al. has now become Stark, Ryan, Banner and Kent. Year of publication, name. And we just highlighted that's an internet resource, but we can always tell from the HTTP address. And not only do we need to put the HTTP address, but we always put a date of access. And that's important because what you're demonstrating to your reader is that this was there when I looked at it. This website was truth when I looked at it. It may not be there now. 
the material may have been changed, the website may have been updated, but when I took it, it was relevant. So again, what you're doing is you're just covering yourself by putting the date of access, and it's important to always do so. So that's a quick 10 minute intro into how to use the Harvard style of referencing when doing up your essays and your projects. If you'd like to go into more detail, by all means, give me a call on 6599245 or email me at michael.goldrick at ncirl.ie. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.